Every day we live and every meal we eat, we influence the great microbial organ inside of us, for better or for worse. Kombucha is a fermented tea that is a probiotic, which contain live microorganisms known to increase the diversity of the microbiome in our gut. It has been used for thousands of years, dating back to 220 BC. Kombucha originated in China for its healing properties. Kombucha is made by introducing a SCOBY, symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast, into brewed black tea with sugar. The tea sits and ferments for one to four weeks and is ready for consumption. When bottled, carbon dioxide gets trapped and makes it bubbly. Kombucha is made up of 200 plus microorganisms. One of the predominant microorganisms is Acetobacteria. It is an AAB, acetic acid bacteria found commonly in fermented foods. This is what produces the vinegar flavor. Another common microorganism and fungus is Zygosaccharomyces. The Acetobacteria family is a gram-negative, rod-shaped bacterium that oxidizes sugars and produces acetic acid. Acetic acid bacteria dominate the bacterial community of kombucha and drive the fermentation process. Some of the AAB is produced through carbohydrate metabolism, but most of it is through the oxidation of ethanol. Kombucha has grown to be increasingly popular over the last few decades. You can now buy kits to begin the tea fermentation process in your own kitchen. These kits include a starter tea to inoculate your new tea. Once your kombucha has had time to brew, it should be moved into the refrigerator to slow down the fermentation process. Kombucha is alive with yeast and bacteria, even after stored in the fridge. It will continue to ferment, but at a slower pace. These live cultures are what make kombucha full of probiotics and increase our gut microbiome and boost our immunity. For assignment number two, microbes in my food, I chose to do my presentation on kombucha. Kombucha is a tea mixture that includes a SCOBY, which is a symbiotic culture for bacteria and yeast. It includes an amount of cultured kombucha from a previous batch, and that's called a starter. Uh, it requires tea, either black, green, or oolong can be used, a sugar source in either honey uh, or table sugar, and then boiling water. And the optimal, optimal temperature is uh, 165 degrees Fahrenheit to rid the water of vegetative bacteria. Microorganisms in kombucha. There's actually quite a few bacteria and yeasts in, present in kombucha, but a few important ones are Chromatobacter xylinus, responsible for SCOBY formation, and this uh, is actually converts glucose into cellulose, which actually creates the thick rubber-like um, layers at the top of the kombucha, known as the SCOBY. There's also Acetobacter aceti, used uh, uses the sugar sources in the tea to convert to acetic acid and gluconobacter oxidans produces acids from oxidizing the sugars in the tea as well. Acetobacter aceti is a rod-shaped proteobacteria with flagellum that are patricusly arranged, and it's a gram-negative obligate anaerobe. Uh, it converts sugars in kombucha to glucose to produce the vinegar known as acetic acid and it has a high tolerance to acidic environments. Gluconobacter oxidans is a gram-negative rod-shaped bacteria and it has two membranes. It does not have flagella. It has a, gr a slow growth rate and it oxidates the sugar in the kombucha through the pentose phosphate pathway, producing acid from the sugars. It is an aerobe and prefers low pH environments. The pentose phosphate pathway is needed for organisms that lack a mitochondria, and that's vital for that, um, the last bacteria on the last slide. It's a multi-step pathway that yields NAP, uh, DPH, which uses, is used to reduce hydrogen. And here's some of the steps that's included in that. And this is the oxidative stage of pentose, pentose phosphate pathway. Um, this is the irreversible stages of the multi-step um, process of conversion. Steps of SCOBY development. Carbon dioxide generates bubbles as bacteria breaks glucose down and produces acids, and those bubbles from the carbon dioxide gather at the top of the tea. Uh, next, a transparent biofilm forms under the carbon dioxide, and this is the beginning of the new SCOBY. Um, for about the next 10 days, a film that is thin and jelly-like grows into an opaque SCOBY, and this actually gets thicker and thicker 
Um, it grows in layers and it continues the process of converting the sugars in the tea to acid. Um, eventually the, sh the food source will give out and it becomes so acidic that it's no longer safe to drink. A new food source has to be introduced into it and a lot of times you have to completely start over if it becomes too acidic. For this assignment, I'll be looking at Bacillus subtilis variation natal and fermentation of food. So fermentation is an aerobic process in which microorganisms like yeast and bacteria break down food components into other products, which gives fermented foods their unique and desirable taste, aroma, texture, and appearance. And popular examples include kimchi and alcohol, and Various microorganisms are used in fermentation, but certain foods use certain microorganisms. And there is an increasing popularity of fermented foods because of their gut and GI benefits and a long shelf life. So natto is a Japanese side dish composing of fermented soybeans, and they're known for their sticky and stringy texture along with their pungent smell. They also have a salty and bitter taste to it and it's usually consumed for gut health, promoting properties, and long shelf life. And the main organism used in this production process is called Bacillus subtilis variation natto. So Bacillus subtilis variation natto is a rod-shaped aerobic endospore-forming gram-positive bacterium that helps keep normal balance of intestinal flora. And when added during fermentation as a starter, B. subtilis variation natto produces y polyglutamic acid, which gives natto its viscous texture, and the bioactive factors involved in the fermentation of natto include natto kinase, bacillopeptidase, and dipicolinic acid. Kimchi is a thousands-year-old fermented food originating from Korea. Made up of various vegetables and spices, it has gained global prominence over the last few decades, particularly as the link between the gut microbiome and overall health is better understood. While its ingredients vary from recipe to recipe, its common bases of cabbage, radish, green onion, garlic, peppers, salt, and rice flour are widely available through the world, making production feasible in many locations. Lactic acid fermentation is a process driven by microbes that enables the creation of this flavorful product and its preservation. Many types of lactic acid producing bacteria are present on kimchi's raw ingredients that contribute to fermentation, including several species from the genres Leuconostoc, Lactobacillus, Podiococcus, and Wazala. Leuconostoccus mesenteroides, in particular, is found in high volumes at the optimal fermentation stage. This gram-positive microbe can tolerate salty, low pH, and lower temperature environments. Typically caucus in shape, it has a diplococci or streptococci arrangement. It is a heterofermentative bacteria, and through its various metabolic processes, it produces lactic acid, lowering pH and inhibiting the growth of spoilage in pathogenic microbes, converts available fructose to mannitol for a refreshing flavor, and synthesizes riboflavin, which supports nutrient breakdown and absorption. Each of these, including the lab themselves, persists through production and are available to benefit from when consumed raw. Kimchi undergoes several types of lactic acid fermentation, which breaks down sugars in the absence of oxygen to generate energy. More than one pathway exists for lacto-fermentation. As a heterofermentative bacteria, Leuconostoc mesenteroides follows the phosphoketolase pathway that breaks down one molecule of glucose derived from kimchi's ingredients and produces one molecule each of lactate, CO2, ethanol, and one net ATP. The microbes present on kimchi's raw ingredients contribute to a varied pr product many conducting her horizontal gene transfer, allowing them to be adaptable and exist in diverse production environments.
microorganisms, and food products. In the production of the beverage known as wine, it starts with the harvest of grapes, picking them, crushing them, the process of fermentation, clarification, and finally bottling. The main ingredient of wine is grapes, as well as the microorganisms involved in their production, as well as additives like sulfur dioxide. The main microorganisms of wine include lactic acid bacteria, as well as yeasts like Saccharomyces cerevisiae and non-Saccharomyces yeasts. The main metabolic processes of wine production include malolactic fermentation and alcohol fermentation. Saccharomyces cerevisiae is a eukaryotic yeast that is a facultative anaerobe and usually round or irregular oval shaped. This is the key microorganism for alcohol fermentation in the production of wine. They're highly tolerant for the usually toxic product of ethanol, although they use it to further grow and reproduce. Its favored use of fermentation and its high survival of fermentation stressors allows it to outcompete other microorganisms in search of sugars. The process for commercial use is detailed as starting with a liquid culture mixed with the sample medium, then incubated and put into large tanks for processes of fermentation. From there, the yeast is separated from the medium, turned into a cream, and then turned into the main commercial form of an active dried yeast. Alcohol fermentation is the process of converting sugars into acids or alcohols, or in turn turning the grape juice into wine. Saccharomyces cerevisiae converts sugars into ethanol and carbon dioxide. Upon bottling of the wine, the yeast cells die at certain alcohol concentration levels. The genome of this yeast has been fully sequenced and is made up of 6,000 genes. The practice of bread making is one of the oldest biochemistry processes in the world. It needs help from microorganisms, and this includes yeast. Yeast have been used for centuries for the production of fermented foods and beverages such as bread, wine, and beer. In ancient times, food fermentations were spontaneous process. However, in the late 19th century, spontaneous fermentation was gradually replaced by controlled processes where pure cultures were used as starters, which yielded increased fermentation speed, quality, and consistency. The yeast I will focus on is Saccharomyces cerevisiae and is undeniably the best studied and one of the most widely used eukaryotes. The Latin origin translates to sugar fungus beer or sugar eating fungus and demonstrates the long history of impacting beverage production. It is a eukary eukaryotic single cell organism part of the fungi kingdom and they are facilitative anaerobes, meaning that they can live and generate energy with or without oxygen. Although they do both cellular respiration and fermentation, the focus here will be on fermentation as it relates to baking. Bread is made from dough, which includes the basic ingredients of flour, sugar, water, yeast. The presence of yeast is essential for dough to rise. It can also impact the flavor through the fermentation process and the production of waste. Then once the bread is baked in the oven, the yeast doesn't survive the baking process that it just greatly impacted. After glycolysis and the creation of two pyruvic acid molecules from glucose, fermentation takes place. CO2 is given off and the reduction to ethanol takes place. In the case of bread, CO2 release creates gas pockets allowing the dough to rise and leaven, and the ethanol can give flavor to the bread and is then burned off when heated in the oven. And through this, we get delicious bread.
My ultimate comfort food hits the spot with umami delicacy and salty dream montages. It's miso, known as a Japanese flavor staple. Despite originating in China and being introduced to Japan 1300 years ago by Buddhist priests as a method of food preservation, Originally associated with the class, polished white rice was utilized for royalty while peasants would use broken rice or barley. These days, miso can be made from buckwheat or rye, among others, but it's always made in two essential fermentations. First, culturing koji mold from a fungus, often Aspergillus aresia, then combining with other components and leaving to be enzymatically digested, fermented, and aged, anywhere from a week to several years. Koji is a Japanese term used interchangeably with Aspergillus aresia. The fungus typically carries the name of the substrate it's inoculated on in front, such as rice koji or millet koji. Aspergillus aresia is a filamentous fungus which, as an obligate aerobe, requires oxygen to function, growing best in moist and warm environments. It's multicellular and haploid, receiving one set of chromosomes and typically reproducing asexually by the dispersal of spores. Not unlike humans, fungus is an autotroph, using organic matter to generate energy, in this case the substrate grain. Aeresia synthesizes enzymes used to break down the grain and create the basis for all koji ferments, including soy sauce, mirin, and sake. Although wild spores were once used for production, large-scale and home batches alike often begin with koji starters, selected grains of aeresia grown on agar slants in pure culture. During koji inoculation, aeresia then utilizes saccharifying enzymes to break down the initial substrate. These enzymes include amylase for starch catabolism, protease for protein. Now that we have simple sugars and other food sources, halo-tolerant bacteria can grow and feed in later stages of the fermentation process. Yeast joins the party, converting simple sugars into alcohol. In this way, our fungus of interest is a martyr, paving the way for future microbial communities to create divine umami undertones, even though A. aresia will die in the process. Once the koji is added to the salt and cooked soybean, the mold dies off and bacteria takes the lead to form lactic acid, transforming the simple sugars into organic acids. Unlike koji inoculation, the secondary ferments mostly anaerobic. We often think of miso as a soup. It's also important to remember that these beneficial bacteria can only withstand warm temperatures and should be added after the cooking process to preserve beneficial bacteria and yeasts. The food item I chose to focus on is kombucha. Kombucha is a fizzy fermented drink that is considered a good source of probiotics. It has a slight vinegar taste to it and contains trace amounts of alcohol due to the process of fermentation. Kombucha is primarily made from black tea that is brewed with sugar. A scoby is introduced to the tea mixture which is a colony of various bacteria and yeast populations that metabolize the nutrients in the tea and undergo the process of fermentation and production of probiotics. One of the most abundant genera of bacteria found in kombucha is Comagatebacter. One specific species is Comagatebacter xylinus, which is a rod-shaped, gram-negative acetic acid bacteria that is an obligate aerobe. When consumed in kombucha, it acts as a beneficial probiotic and supports immune function. Fermentation in kombucha occurs symbiotically between yeast and bacteria, Yeast will first convert the sucrose found readily in the tea and sugar mixture kombucha is made from into ethanol, glucose, fructose, and CO2. The CO2 is what gives kombucha a fizzy taste. Bacteria will then convert the byproducts glucose and fructose into bacterial cellulose, which creates the slimy biofilm that keeps the scoby together. Bacteria is also responsible for converting ethanol into acetic acid, which is the main component of vinegar. These processes are all specific to the fermentation that occurs to create kombucha.
Kefir is a fermented milk drink, somewhat between milk and yogurt, um, and is produced using kefir grains, which are primarily lactic acid bacteria, acetic acid bacteria, yeast, in a complex of polysaccharides and proteins, um, and is known for many health benefits, including immunity, GI-related tumor suppression, um, and cholesterol reduction. Um, one of the main microbes within it is lactobacillus, um, and it is primarily known for its ability to ferment lactose into lactic acid and very tolerant of an acidic environment. Um, and this pH that is lowered um, by the lactic acid formation is known for um, limiting the growth of pathogenic bacteria, which is attributed to spoiling. Um, and then on the right here, you can see the production process, which includes the pasteurized use, use of pasteurized milk and kefir grains, which are incubated at room temperature for about 18 to 24 hours and then separated out via filtration. The grains can be reused to make more um, or stored for later use. And then our um, product is the milk kefir, which is then usually stored in the fridge. Um, the main method um, process using this metabolism is lactose fermentation, um, lactose permease allows lactose to be uptaken into the um, bacteria, and then um, lactose is metabolized to glucose and galactose via beta-galactosidase, and then it follows the glycosidic pathway with an additional step of reducing pyruvate to lactate. Beta-galactosidase is used as a treatment for lactose intolerance, um, and many studies have been performed studying how gene modification can be used to introduce treatments for different GI-related and non-related diseases. Microbes are everywhere, even on our food, but some microbes are important in making certain food products like pickles. Pickles are eaten all over the world and have been around for 4,000 years. Uh, the earliest recording of pickles was in Mesopotamia. The most common ingredients are cucumbers, obviously, salt, vinegar, dill, and garlic. The group of microorganisms I'll be focusing on is lactobacillus. This bacteria is rod-shaped, gram-positive, and anaerobic. Lactobacillus metabolizes the sugars in the cucumbers during fermentation. This is what gives the pickle that distinct tangy flavor. Lactobacillus is naturally occurring on the cucumber, so you don't need to introduce it to your brine, and it remains alive. Lactobacillus is not harmful and is a beneficial probiotic. The specific metabolic process that is important 
in turning cucumbers into pickles is lactic acid fermentation. The sugars in cucumbers are converted into lactic acid, giving them a tangy taste. The substrates that are necessary in this fermentation is basically from plant waste like molasses and starchy materials. The products created are carbon dioxide, lactic acid, along with acetic acid. Lactic acid is basically what preserves the pickles, extending their shelf life because of the lactobacillus used in lactic acid fermentation eats away at the sugars, so the spoilage microbes can't spoil the food. And that is the summary of my essay, Microbes in My Food. Thank you for listening. Hey, uh, so this is my project on microbes and our food. Um, so I... Obviously, there are many microbial rich foods everywhere, and um, some of them are the most delicious, and we eat them all the time. Um, milk, miso, um, various kinds of um, pickles and pickled vegetables are also really delicious. Um, but for my project, I wanted to focus on cheese just because I love cheese and it's so delicious. Um, essentially, it's just milk, which is made up of uh, fat, it's a suspension of fat, protein, and vitamins and minerals, um, some microbacteria and other uh, microbes, and uh, it's suspended in water um, with a starter culture, um, and some kind of coagulation um, enzyme like rennet, and then there's usually salt to bring out the flavor. Um, but typically the procedure is milk is heated up, and uh, this starter culture of different microbacteria is added, um, which helps speed up the process, breaking down the milk and um, separating that uh, protein and fat out from the water solution so that you can actually press that together then drain the water out and then get ready f to basically age that cheese and let um, the environment and microbacteria um, change the, the composition of the milk. Um, so I specifically wanted to focus on Lactococcus lactis uh, just because it is such a prevalent bacteria um, used in the process of cheese making. It is a gram-positive bacteria, caucus shaped typically arranged in pairs or short change. Um, it's a mesophile, meaning it likes a moderate temperatures and uh, lower environments of air. Um, it also loves to ferment lactose, and it's very, very good at doing it. Um, and so that is a metabolic process that really is essential for making milk into cheese. It basically involves the breakdown of glucose or lactose uh, in the form of milk um, without the presence of oxygen, which results in lactic acid, which helps to break down that milk and change the process or change the uh, composition of milk to cheese, um, lowering the pH and helping to break those bonds in the protein and fat and releasing the nutrients within those bonds, um, which then is pressed together to make a big curd and finally you get cheese. Hey there, this is Santo. I did my project on the fermentation of a Filipino fish and shrimp paste called begong. Um, uh, begong uh, starts out as um, unsellable, too small to sell uh, fish and shrimp, uh, too small to export. So um, the fish and shrimp are ground up um, into like a slurry and then they're placed into tapayans, which are uh, earthen fermentation jars with like a three to one salt brine could be different depending on the region that it's produced in. And fermentation can be uh, anywhere from 90 days to two years. The longer, the better, the more pungent and fishy and delicious it is. There's also a byproduct um, that is uh, skinned off of the top of the upper layer of the slurry. It's called patis. Um, this is at the end of the fermentation process and that itself is um, uh, bottled um, and then also sold. Um, uh, while there is uh, uh, very little research into the actual uh, microbial like makeup of uh, fermented foods in the Philippines, one uh, that we do know is that there is uh, the most prevalent microorganism in Bagong is the Tetrogeniococcus haliophilus. Um, and it's anaerobic, it's gram positive, it's uh, lactic acid bacterium. Um, uh, it occurs naturally in the process, so there's nothing added to um, the actual uh, product while it's in fermentation. And this is also a um, bacteria that's uh, present in miso and soy sauce and other. Uh, um, 
fermented fermented food. Um, Begong undergoes a lactic acid fermentation um, from the original ground up assortment of fish and chips, uh, fish and shrimp to this final paste product. So this lactic acid fermentation pathway, glucose is broken down uh, to pyruvate by glyco glycolysis and then that glycose to pyruvate produces two ATPs and that's the uh, homolactic acid fermentation. Um, and uh, that is Begong and I hope that you get to taste it someday. Um, it's especially good on green mango, if you can believe it. Hello, my name is Garrett Thielking, and my presentation is on blue cheese production and its primary microorganisms, the penicillium genus. Blue cheese is distinctive, strongly flavored, and very divisive. You will either love it or hate it. Most people don't have mild opinions on the matter. It is made from either raw or pasteurized cow or sheep's milk, depending on the region. Various lactic acid bacteria are the primary fermenting organism, and penicillium are responsible for the secondary fermentation.
The primary organism in most blue cheeses is going to be Penicillium roqueforti. In addition to being primarily employed in cheese production, it is cultured for industrial flavor applications. Penicillium roqueforti is an ascomycota that needs oxygen to live. It is for this reason that blue cheese curds are bundled loosely during secondary fermentation to facilitate the growth of the mold and its distinctive blue and green veins. The creamy texture and huge flavors of blue cheeses are due to proteolysis of casein and lipolysis that generates ketones, respectively. The primary flavor ketone is methyl 2 heptanone. It is this ketone that is also used, used to add blue cheese flavor in the industrial food flavor applications mentioned before. Thank you for your time, and I hope you found this presentation somewhat informative. Natto is a traditional Japanese dish made from fermented soybeans. Soaking the yellow whole soya beans in water overnight will initiate a naturally occurring acidification process. Once cooked or steamed the soybeans are inoculated with Bacillus subtilis, incubated for about a day, then packaged for distribution, and lastly stored in the refrigerator. Bacillus subtilis belongs to the Bacillus group of species that is found, naturally occurring, all over the world. B. subtilis is a rapidly growing gram-positive bacterium with rod-shaped cells capable of sporulation. It is generally classified as an aerobe. However, it can grow under strict anaerobic conditions as demonstrated in the production of natto via fermentation. The production of natto relies on the fermentation process of B. subtilis utilizing cooked soybeans as the source of nutrients for the microorganism. The exergonic anaerobic process of fermentation produces chemical changes in the organic substrate, which in the case of natto is the soybeans. Through the action of enzymes present in B. subtilis it can extract energy from carbohydrates in the absence of oxygen. Studies on the use of Bacillus subtilis natto as a spore-forming probiotic bacterium in animal nutrition have demonstrated the effectiveness of its use as a probiotic mainly due to its proven antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, enzymatic, and immunomodulatory activity. Thank you.
Hi, my name's Rode, and the food I chose was cheese along with the microorganism Lactococcus lactus. So to make cheese, the first step is pasteurization, which is just the process where the milk is sterilized by killing dangerous bacteria. And then to standardization, which is just adding fats, proteins, other ingredients to the milk. And so here is where enzymatic coagulation meets with um, the metabolic fermentation process over here. And so fermentation converts the sugar, lactose, and milk into lactic acid. This is also referred to as glycolysis. Uh, this increases the acidity of the milk, which facilitates the process of coagulation. And so the genetically engineered um, enzyme rennet, which comes from renin, is used to coagulate as well. From here, the curds separate from the whey, and then the salt is added, they're molded. And in this step before ripening, microbial succession takes place. And here the microbes and cheese are changing their metabolic activities and this causes the removal of microbial stains that aren't necessary anymore, but also the growth of microbes that will facilitate um, ripening. So Lactococcus lactis is a type of species of lactic acid bacteria. The shape is spherical, it's gram positive, and found in singles, pairs, chains, as you can see over here. Some lactococcus can grow in aerobic environments, but most of them are found in anaerobic environments. So although lactococcus can grow in the presence of oxygen, it conducts its main metabolism, which is fermentation, through anaerobic pathways. Hello, my name is Cassandra Carroll, and this is my microbes and my food project. Um, I decided to focus on the beverage beer. Um, interestingly, uh, beer has been around for thousands of years, um, notably back in um, ancient China around the year 7000 BC, there's evidence of a beer-like beverage um, known as uh, kwai, which was um, composed of uh, rice, grapes, honey, and hawthorn plants. Um, back in the day, they um, used to use beer as a tribute or tithe in many cases. Um, today, beer is mostly composed of water, malt, hops, and yeast. And uh, interestingly, Washington and Oregon actually produces the most um, hops worldwide. Um, the majority of barley crops are located in Europe, Russia, and uh, Australia. Um, beer is developed via fermentation by a specific yeast fungus known as Saccharomyces, which literally means sugar fungus. Um, and the two types of yeast um, that are primarily used in beer production is S. cerevisiae and S. pastorianus. Um, they're eukary eukaryotic microorganisms of the fungi family and are facultative anaerobes. Um, S. cerevisiae is used to make ale-type beers, um, and they are known as top fermenters, meaning they like to travel to the top of the vat during the fermentation process in like warmer temperatures. Whereas S. Uh, S. pastorianus, um, they're used to make lager type beers and referred to as bottom fermenters. And they actually travel to the bottom of the vat during the fermentation process and um, like cooler temperatures around five to 10 degrees Celsius. Interestingly, it's the types of yeast that are used in the production of beer that actually give um, each beer its unique flavor profile. And how do we get the um, alcohol that is present in yeast? Um, it happens, uh, or in beer, it, it happens um, via a al um, alcoholic fermentation, which takes place in the cytosol of the yeast. Um, so basically the yeast eats the sugar that's present in the malt of the beer. Um, glycolysis occurs where, um, uh, were two, where the sugar is broken down into two pyruvate molecules, which are then converted to acetaldehyde via um, removal of um, carbon dioxide molecules. The um, oxidation of NADH to NAD plus um, then uh, is what converts the acetaldehyde to ethanol. And that is what gives uh, beer its alcoholic characteristics. And that is my project. Thank you. Beer is the most popular alcoholic beverage worldwide. 
It involves malting, boiling, cooling, fermenting, aging, and packaging. The four main ingredients of beer are yeast, hops, grains, and water. The grains in beer, such as barley, wheat, or rye, are malted to metabolize the grain sugar maltose. Depending on the type of beer produced, different types of yeast will be used. For example, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, otherwise known as brewer's yeast, is used in ales, and Saccharomyces pastorianus is typically used in lagers. The role of yeast in beer production is to consume the maltose from the grains, producing ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide. Yeast is therefore responsible for fermentation. The main role of microorganisms in beer production is fermentation. S. cerevisiae is the leading fermenter. It is a single-celled fungus with a caucus shape, has a fermentative metabolism, and is a facultative anaerob, meaning it can grow with or without oxygen. S. cerevisiae carries out fermentation by the metabolism of sugars from the grains in beer, creating pyruvate that breaks down to form ethanol and carbon dioxide. During this fermentation process, Metabolites are created, changing the aromas that are produced depending on the environment. Fermentation is the process of yeast converting maltose into ethanol. The first step in this process is glycolysis, involving two redox reactions, which turn one molecule of sugar into two molecules of pyruvic acid. In an anaerobic environment, the pyruvic acid is converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide through alcoholic fermentation. This being said, yeast is the key ingredient in beer production. Without it, Beer would not contain alcohol and would not produce such a variety of flavors. Hi, this is Forrest. I'm going to be talking about sauerkraut today. Sauerkraut's a traditional fermented food made from salted, shredded raw cabbage. Um, it's recognized usually as being from Germany or Eastern Europe, uh, but it actually originates in China. Um, by shredding the cabbage you increase the surface area and release the sugars that are inside um, and then you you add salt to that um, and that draws out the water creating a briny solution and then you basically uh, pack that down into a crock or a jar and you pack it down below the the brine level um, so and that creates an anaerobic environment Leuconostoc mesenteroides is the bacteria that kind of really initiates um, fermentation in sauerkraut. It's a gram-positive, coccyx-shaped, facultative anaerobe, although it can take have different shapes in different environments. It's a lactic acid bacteria, and it utilizes uh, heterofermentation as opposed to homofermentation. Um, it's present on the skins of many fruits and vegetables, um, and basically it as it starts to um, work, it quickly lowers the environmental pH in the brine, inhibiting the non-lacto-fermenting bacteria and creating an ideal environment for other lactic acid bacteria. Um, it can tolerate, tolerate high salt and sugar concentrations, which makes it pretty ideal in food preservation. Um, basically, in heterofermentation, one glucose molecule is results in one lactate, one ethanol, one carbon dioxide, and one ATP molecule. Um, and it does this basically first um, carbon dioxide is split off from the glucose molecule and then that resulting pentose sugar is split into a two carbon and three carbon fragment. Um, the three carbon is reduced to lactate and the two carbon piece is reduced to ethanol. And then those are used to regenerate NAD+. Plus. Um, and that's all for sauerkraut and leuconostoc mesenteroides. Thank you. Hello, my name is Raquel. And for this project, I chose kimchi. So kimchi is a traditional Korean food made with fermented vegetables, usually containing cabbage, radishes, and onions. The process of making kimchi involves lacto-fermentation, and the microorganism responsible is lactobacillus, or lactic acid bacteria. Lactic acid bacteria is gram-positive, rod-shaped, and anaerobic bacteria. The process of making kimchi involves brining, which is submerging vegetables in salt water. This kills harmful pathogens such as salmonella, which do not survive in saline environments. After washing the kimchi, 
you add the condiments, which are red pepper, garlic, onion, and ginger. This is then put into a glass container with an airtight lid, and some people add rice water or brine. With fermentation, lactic acid bacteria metabolizes sugar to produce lactic acid and CO2. It is then refrigerated to slow down fermentation, making it last longer. It can last up to two to three weeks in the refrigerator, or three to four days at room temperature. It is important to check for mold. Eating spoiled kimchi may lead to a foodborne illness. Foods high in lactic acid bacteria include cheese, yogurt, and sauerkraut. Lactic acid bacteria is associated with improving immune function, gut health, and lowering cholesterol. Thank you.